Okay, hello guys, I'm going through the AQA Accounting ACOM 1 paper for June 2012 and we'll be doing the last question, the big question, question 3, uh, income statement balance sheet. Very simple. Let's get into it. So, working 1. Insurance for the year ended 30th of June 2012 has been paid. The total payment was 3960 So, as we can see, the date they've given us is the 30th of June 2012. However, the financial year ends on the 30th of April 2012. That simply means, let's see how many more months we have prepaid. So it's April, May, June. So we've prepaid two months. So, number one, prepayment. So we've got, let's put the figure in, times by two. So we've prepaid two months over the contract length. Well, the contract is a year. So, 12 months. And when we times them together, we get 660. What's that going to be? That's going to be a current asset because we prepaid it. So, technically, we're in the good. Anyway, right, insurance. Because we have a prepayment, it's going to change our expense. So, what is our insurance in the figures they've given us? 17520. What we're going to do is we're going to take away the prepayment, that's what we do. And that's going to give us 16860. Oh. Okay, so on to point two. An invoice for rates for the six months to the 30th of September 2012, totaling 3420, have been received but not entered. Okay, things to note. Six months. 30th of September 2012, and obviously the amount. And the fact it's not been entered, but they wouldn't put it in if it had been entered into the additional information, of course. So, let's count. So, we've got it's been paid till then, but we're well not paid actually, sorry, my apologies. May, June, July, August, September. Five months the bill is for. Six months the bill is for, but five months are in the next financial year. So there must be one month in this financial year that we haven't paid for. So that's an accrual. And that's going to equal cost of the expense. Turns out how many months are we in arrears? One of the length of the contract, six months. See how it's different in part one? They gave us it for 12 months a year, but how is just six months? And he times 3420 by one sixth. 570. Right, we've taken away our prepayment from our insurance expense, so our rates expense. Oh, by the way, rents and rates is just rates. It's the exact same thing. So, rent and rates was 24,780, but now we've changed it. So, if we took away prepayment, we're going to add accrual, and that's going to come to 25 free. Five. Oh, okay. Number three. On 30th of April 2012, Michelle transferred 10,000 from her personal savings into the business bank account, and it's not yet been entered. Okay. It seems pretty simple, but there's one little trick they've put. Not much of a trick, but it can confuse some people. We have a bank overdraft. Currently, that's a current liability that we owe that. So. Negative six three seventy, but we've put ten thousand pounds into the business bank account, so I'm just going to add ten thousand, and that's going to give us three six thirty. Now it's a current asset. We have money in our bank account. We have cash in hand. We can spend that. However, capital, because everything think about it, everything has an equal and opposite effect. We have so you have your T accounts, you can have a debit and a credit for everything. Think about it. You buy a vehicle, you're going to debit your assets, and you're going to credit whatever you so if pay, Say if you pay with your bank account, you're going to credit your bank account because you've lost money, but you've gained a vehicle. Very simple. Okay, so capital was the 1st of May, that's the start of the financial year, 5, 4, 3, 90. What we're going to do today, we've increased our capital. So simple, six, four, 
390, so that's going to concern our equity and the balance sheet. Easy enough. Part 4, the motor vehicle. Let me just move this up a bit. The motor vehicle is depreciated using a straight line method over six years. The estimated residual value of the motor vehicle at the end of the sixth year, 5,200. So let's work out the depreciation first, and then we'll work out the value of the vehicle. So the way to work out a straight line when you've been given a residual value, maybe called scrap value, means the same thing. Currently the cost is 26500 I'm putting it in brackets because that's what you need to do when you're on your calculator. Just make, uh, make sure you don't make any mistakes because you always need to put your brackets in. So what you do is put your cost minus residual value. Right, so the difference between them two numbers is how much depreciation the vehicle is going to see in its whole lifetime. But what we want, we want one year because our financial year, what was to say, year, C1, one year, and we have six years. We're going to hold this vehicle, so one sixth, and that depreciation comes to 3550. Oh. Okay, now we further depreciated our vehicle, so we're going to have to decrease the value more. So 26500 when we bought it, minus away the depreciation this year. However, we have a provision. What what the vehicle's already lost in depreciation. So take away that. Eight seven five. Oh, and that should work. Obviously you get marks for these. It's not just the income statement and balance sheet where you've got the correct number at the end. These all count. These all will be worth one mark. So if you get these, you're on a good start. So Let's move on to the income statement. What's the most important? What's the first thing you do when you do any financial statement? Title. Income statement for owner of the business, name of the business, Michelle Kaufman. We're not going to be given a name of the business. Say if it was for uh, Apple, the uh, people make the iPhones. Um, you'd do it for Apple, so the income statement for Apple for the year ended. For the year ended, when was the year ended? 31st of April 2012. Right, what's nice about this question is it's giving us the gross profit 82,510. It's a nice one, isn't it? The difference between maybe ACA 1 and ACA 2 of a question like this is in the additional information they might give you something that affects purchases which obviously becomes be comes before gross profit so that so they want you to know that gross profit is affected by a change in purchase, a change in your inventory, a change in your revenue your returns. So just look out for that if you ever do a unit 2. Okay, there's something on these list of values here that needs to be added to our gross profit. Which one is it? Discount received. 940. Why do we add it? It's an another income. So say if you um sold a car and you made a profit on it, you'd add that on as well. You'll get more into that in a second year accounting. And that will give you eight three four fifty, I believe. Yep. And uh, that's it, that's your new gross profit. Now we need to take away all our expenses. There's total, there are five expenses. So if we take, if we add discount received to gross profit, we've got the opposite. Discount allowed on 390. So what we're going to do, we're going to take that away from our gross profit. There you go. Okay, another one. Insurance, which we dealt with the additional information. Uh, motor running expenses, I'm just going to put motor expenses. Most running expenses that might be a uh, fuel or the maintenance, uh, rent and rates, another thing we deal with in our additional information, and the final one, the last point on our workings, depreciation. Right, let's deal with the easy ones first. So discount allowed, that's unaffected, that's not been changed by anything. One three ninety. Motor expenses as well, that's neither been changed. Eight, 
three one out. Yeah. Okay, so it's now cut to our additional information. This is what helps when you do your work, and you can just put it in, knowing you've calculated it. You don't have to do any more calculations. So insurance. 16,860 rent and rates 25,350 and depreciation only for this year not not this year plus provision that's all taken away to give you the total motor vehicle cost of now so just this year because we only care about one year and all your expenses added up brings you to a grand total of 55,460 which gives you a net profit, you can call it profit for the year, it's up to you, neither of them are wrong, 27 minutes, so if you got to that, well done, if you didn't then I uh, hope this has helped you, and uh, let's move on to the balance sheet, where's that paper gone? Right next to me. Right. Just before I did the income statement, I said what was the most important thing. Well, the first thing again, <laughs> the balance sheet for Michelle Kaufman. Okay, the difference with this one is as at, not the year ended, as at. I think it's worth a mark. Well, the title's definitely worth a mark, so make sure you get it in. Could be a difference in a grade, you never know. Also, you might hear balance sheet also known as statement of financial position. Uh, doesn't really matter for now. Balance sheet's completely correct. So, what's the first thing you do on a balance sheet? Non current assets. We only have one non-current asset, which is our motor vehicle. And from our workings, we know it's worth 8750 And what I'm going to do is just underline it to show that's all of the assets done with. Okay, current assets. Okay, we'll get the easy ones out of the way first of all. Inventory, 30th April 2012. So that must be our closing inventory, which must be our asset. We own it, we can sell it and make more money. Our trade receivables, 13550. Uh, we have a prepayment from our additional workings. And there's one more. We now have a bank with a positive cash sum. Not a bank overdraft anymore. So it's not a current liability, it's now a current asset. So let me just put all the figures in for these. 46280. Trade receivables unchanged. The prepayment was 660. And the bank now has £3,630 in it which gives us a total current assets of 64,120. Okay, total assets. Let's sum our assets up. And that's going to bring us 72,870. So if our second half of our balance sheet equals this, it's most likely right. Unless we made some silly mistake, but let's hope not. So, let's just move all this up so you can read it all. Equity. Three things are going to go in here. Capital. Drawings. And, of course, our net profit from our income statement. So, our capital, it was changed by our additional information had that at the start of the year, then we transferred 10000 from Michelle's personal account into the business bank account, so it now equals 64390 Drawings. We do have drawings, 32960 
and that is always taking away from our equity and our net profit from the income statement was 27 99. Oh, okay. So now our total equity will be 59,420. When you get onto a uh, unit two, three, four, more things that go on your equity is like uh, shares, stuff like that. More real life things, shares really, aren't they? Uh, there's one non current liability. If you can try and spot it while I'm writing, that's good. It's the bank loan. Okay, so a current liability is anything we're going to have to repay within the next 12 months. We have here July 2013. So add a year onto that, we've only got the 30th April 2013, which falls two months short of the bank loan repayment date. So, non current liability, 4,600. Underline it like we did with the assets just to show it's done, we don't have any others. And on to finally, onto our current liabilities, we have two of these obviously, trade payables. And we have another one from our additional workings accrual 570. Just notice how uh, points two and three, they affect both the income statement and the balance sheet. So it's just good to know, just make sure you're checking everything, it's always going to have two effects, most points. And the trade repayables are 8280. So add them up and we get a total of 8850. That's not wrong, that's no, right, sorry. <laughs> So, one thing to notice is, point three, if she hadn't have transferred the £10,000 from a personal savings to the bank account, that bank account would be a current liability and would be in here. But because we've brought it back up above zero, we have more money and it's no longer a current liability and it's a current asset. So, we add one, two, three, four. And this is where everyone gets nervous and hopes it equals that. So we need these three to equal that. 4,600. 8850 and it does, it's great. 72870. Well done if you got it. If you didn't, I hope this has helped you show how show how you do it. Um any issues, please email me. The email will be in the uh, description. If it's a more of a longer issue, please email me. It's a short issue, maybe a, a sentence answer, please put it in the comments. I'll try and do it as quickly as I can. If uh, an issue comes up a lot, I will um definitely put it in the comments so everyone can see it but uh, have a good day and I'll uh, see you next time